With over 20 studios in towns and cities across the West, this is Shaw TV, your local voice. Welcome back to the show. As you can see, we've switched locations. We're now downtown at the Sun Life Building, and I'm joined by Susan McGee. She's the executive director of Homer Trust, and you have a big event coming up this weekend. It's called Homeless Connect. So for our viewers, please describe what the event is. Absolutely. It's our eighth Homeless Connect. It's at the Shaw Conference Center twice a year, and we coordinate it on behalf of the community. And really, it's 60-plus services available in one location in one day for our homeless community members and those at risk of homelessness to get things like haircuts, dental care, um, there's a hot lunch provided, and on many, many other services to introduce them to what's available for them. Okay, and you said this is your eighth year. How did last year go? Because obviously it's been going well. Well, it's our eighth event, and we do it twice a year, so okay. in the spring and fall. And, uh, you know, it's a very popular event, very popular for the volunteers. We have over 400 volunteers that assist us in making it all happen, and it's a very great experience for them to be able to, um, really in a very respectful and inviting atmosphere, provide people with that opportunity for services. And last uh, event, over 1,700 people attended it. 1,700 people, not including the volunteers? Not including the volunteers. So 1,700 people, and some of them lining up at very early in the morning to make sure that they're able to get some of those more popular services, like a haircut. The lineup is pretty long for that. I see. How do you get so many people to just devote their day to this cause? 400 people here in Edmonton. Is it easy? Well, actually, they're incredibly enthusiastic. Of those 400, many have been doing it uh, repeatedly. Some have not missed an event. And part of what we try to do is make sure they know exactly what they're doing when they get there. Uh, we orient them and make sure that they're prepared for kind of what to expect. And it, we really do emphasize that this is, a, this is a welcoming event and something where we're being kind of a concierge to those people who are looking for services. So the, the experience of it is very positive. Uh, over the last seven times the Homeless Connect has happened, what are some of the success stories that you've heard? Well, you know, there are people that come and they, they get introduced to services they've never seen before. We do have people who are now coming back and volunteering who were homeless um, over the last couple of years who've come to the event and have now got a home and uh, maybe not directly linked to the event, but they do connect with the event and the experience they had. And that must be the best part for you. It really does um, make everybody I think involved feel very good. We know that we're not ending homelessness in one day at this one event, but it does create an awareness in our community just how much uh, continued effort needs to be made on this front and that it takes all of us. Mm -hmm. When uh, the people at home are watching this, what do you want our viewers to take from it? The fact that this event is happening, what would you like the, how would you like the community to to get involved. Well, there's lots of ways of people getting involved in, you know, assisting those in need. For this particular uh, effort, we're really trying to stress that um, ending homelessness is possible, um, that these are really unfortunate circumstances that many of our community members face, but there's hope. And really, um, to kind of think about our efforts to end homelessness in our community as one of possibility. What do you think is the first step for, to helping people get off the streets? Well, the only end of homelessness is housing, and that's what the Housing First program is all about. But uh, awareness of those opportunities is also very important, so we stress that as well. And job, helping people get into the job world? Absolutely. You know, there's people who've uh, found employment opportunities at Homeless Connect or have been connected to services that will facilitate that for them. Um, not everybody's in the uh, position of being able to, unfortunately, get full-time employment. They may have uh, barriers to that, but they still need our support. And they, uh, we really focus on people achieving the highest level of independence that they can. For our viewers that don't know what Homeware Trust does, besides Homeless Connect, what does your organization do? Uh, we're the management body for any homelessness, and we're responsible for for administering on behalf of the three orders of government funds uh, to address capital projects, support service projects. The province of Alberta is the only one in Canada that has a plan on homelessness, and they've trusted us with a very kind of big role in administering those resources. Will you be down there this weekend when homeless connections Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah, haven't missed one. And what do you do when you're there? When do you do you just? Um, really, I'm, I'm there to be available to certainly staff and volunteers, as well as anybody that is looking to ask questions about the organization and those involved. Okay, and what are some common questions that people come up to you with? Well, you know, they really want to know kind of the numbers. They, they find it um, very surprising to see how many services are accessed that day. There's a lot of haircuts. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of haircuts uh -huh. in one day. So they're interested in those kinds of things, but they're also interested in what happens throughout the year, and this is an opportunity for us to share those stories. With you, with doing so many haircuts, are you looking for other salons to get on board to your next event? Probably it's too late for this weekend, but in future events? Well, we have a fantastic steering committee. Um, it's comprised of people who take on specific roles, and we have a volunteer that works uh, in support of the services. And throughout the year, I mean, there's some core people that 
have participated, but every between events, we're always looking for new participation for sure. Gotcha. And one thing that I was unclear with a little bit when I was reading the press release was the fact that I thought there might you might be looking for funds for people to make donations, but that's not the case. Well, it's uh, really put together mostly with the resources of all the agencies that contribute. They all incur their own costs. They bring it to the event. We do have some private sector uh, donations of either in-kind support or some cash support. There are certain items that do cost us money. We have comfort care kits that are coordinated by the United Way and, and other partners that uh, bring other things to the table. And we're always a little short on those. So we've had uh, Parley McClaws actually donate considerably to this event in terms of being able to meet that need. Um, but really, we're not. that's not the focus of this. Many of the organizations we work with and are at the event raise money all year to do what they're doing. That's not what we're intending to do with this event. It's really just to make sure that we can make the event happen and have it really positive. Anything else you'd like to say to our viewers? Yeah, I think that's right. Thank all you. Right. Thanks so much, Susan. We'll be right back after this.